On behalf of Chrysler Corporation, welcome to Understanding Neon, a video owner's manual produced specifically for you, the Neon owner. First, let me congratulate you on your purchase or lease of a Neon. It's an exceptional new vehicle designed from the start with a dare-to-be-different attitude. In fact, the team of professionals responsible for design, engineering, and manufacturing had one guiding principle in mind to exceed your expectations of what a subcompact car can provide. At Chrysler's Technology Center is where it all came together with state-of-the-art engineering and manufacturing technology that established the groundwork for a vehicle that offers industry-altering quality and value. As a result, many of the features on Neon are completely new or redesigned, and in this program, we'll highlight those features and some of Neon's key operating procedures to help you get to know Neon. While the information presented in this program will give you a good review of features that you'll use in everyday driving, be sure to read your NEON Owner's Manual and the NEON Tips Book. These materials will give you specific details, warnings, recommendations, and restrictions about the operation of your NEON. And now, let's get acquainted with NEON. Neon offers high levels of safety with standard driver and front passenger airbags. Outstanding performance with one of the most powerful engines in its class. And exceptional value with features like a stainless steel exhaust system that provides excellent service life. In addition, all Neons receive a special undercoating of tough, resilient plastic that protects the rocker panel, hood, and front fender body paint from the damaging effects of flying stones. This chip-resistant material adds peace of mind protection and years of life to your paint treatment. Neon was also designed with a watchful eye on the environment. Non-CFC air conditioning refrigerant, select parts coated for recycling, and water-based paints to reduce emissions during manufacturing are only few examples of Chrysler Corporation's environmental efforts. While there are many more innovations that we'll discuss throughout this program, let's focus now on the basic operating functions and procedures of your new NEON. Let's start with the key. One key starts the engine, locks and unlocks the doors, and opens the trunk. Upon entering the vehicle, the first thing you want to do is adjust your seat. Simply pull up the bar located underneath the seat to move forward or backward, or to recline, use the lever located on the outboard side of the seat. On the Neon Coupe, the front seat backs fold forward to give you access to the rear passenger area. The seat backs feature an inertia latching mechanism that automatically locks to prevent the seats from folding during periods of high deceleration such as hard braking. There are some situations, like parking on a steep hill, that will cause the latching mechanism to lock. If this happens, lift the release lever to unlock the seat back. If it does not release, continue to hold the lever up and rock the seat back fore and aft until it unlocks. And to avoid injury, be sure to move the seat belt out of the way before entering or leaving the rear passenger area. On some models, the Neon is equipped with a fold-down rear seat that provides plenty of versatility and convenience. To increase your cargo carrying capacity, pull on the seat back loops to release the locking mechanism and fold down the seat. Like all controls on Neon, adjustments have been designed for easy access and quick operation. If your model is equipped with a tilt steering column, you've noticed that it's not your typical tilt steering system. To adjust, push the release lever. To lock the steering wheel in place, simply pull up and replace the lever. To adjust the manual outside mirrors, Neon features easy-to-use control levers. On vehicles equipped with dual power remote control mirrors, you can select the left or right mirror by pushing the mirror selector switch. There's a center off position that guards against accidentally moving a mirror position. To start your Neon, turn the key in the ignition to the on position. If you forgot to buckle your seat belt, a seat belt indicator light and tone will alert you for six to eight seconds. The chime will tone until the seat belt is pulled for latching. You can change the height of the seat belt turning loop by readjusting the six position turning loop anchor. To adjust the height, Push up or down on the lever in the center of the anchor and slide it to a new position. 
The shoulder belt on the Neon Coupe will automatically adjust to your size, but if it doesn't fit properly when first hooked up, the occupant can either rock forward several times or pull the webbing out and allow it to feed back to the retractor until the belt lays across the desired position on the shoulder. To turn your vehicle on and off, there are a few things you'll need to know. First, on models equipped with a manual transmission, there's a clutch pedal starter interlock. This feature requires that the clutch be fully depressed to start the engine, preventing the vehicle from being started while in gear. Normal engine starting is done simply by turning the ignition key. Depressing the accelerator is not required. Neon is also equipped to automatically adjust engine idle speed, compensating for vehicle accessory demands. That means that when an accessory like the air conditioning is turned on, the engine idle will adjust to accommodate the added power needed to run the air conditioning. After the engine is started, the idle speed will automatically decrease as the engine warms up. Allow the engine to idle for a few seconds before putting your Neon in gear. To protect the engine, your Neon has an engine control computer that has been programmed to momentarily shut off fuel if the engine speed exceeds the red line. In spite of this protection, downshifting at high speeds should be avoided on manual transmissions to prevent damage from overspeeding the engine or clutch. Very cold temperatures affect the shifting of automatic transmissions. Hard accelerations while the transmission is cold may cause the computer's overspeed fuel control feature to be activated occasionally. Hard accelerations should be avoided until the engine is warmed up. Now, on vehicles equipped with automatic transmission, there's a shifter ignition interlock function. This system prevents the key from being removed unless the shift lever is in park. It also prevents shifting out of park if the key is removed or in the lock position. On vehicles with a manual transmission, there's an interlock button. To remove the key, it's necessary to depress the interlock button while turning the key. If you have left your key in the ignition and opened the door, a reminder chime will sound continuously until you remove the key or close the driver door. Once the key is removed, turning the steering wheel will engage the steering wheel lock for protection against theft. To unlock the wheel, Insert the key and turn the ignition switch on. Occasionally, the alignment of the steering wheel lock may make it difficult to turn the ignition key. If this happens, turn the wheel slightly while turning the key. Every Neon operates on regular unleaded fuel with a minimum octane rating of 87. To get the best performance out of a Neon equipped with a 2-liter dual overhead cam engine, use a 91 octane unleaded fuel. The fuel filler door is located on the passenger side of the vehicle. A small arrow next to the trip odometer serves as a reminder of which side of the vehicle the filler door is located. For more details on fueling procedures and cautions on the types of fuel used or if you have any questions about any of the items contained in this segment, refer to your Neon Owner's Manual. Next up, safety. In the Chrysler Corporation tradition of providing a safe and secure driving environment, NEON provides a long list of active and passive safety features. Active safety features are those that help you avoid an accident with features like available ABS, responsive engine acceleration, and agile vehicle handling and stability. Passive safety includes those features designed to protect occupants in the event of an accident, such as driver and front passenger airbags, and side guard door beams are important safety features that come standard on every Neon model. While airbags provide supplemental protection for the driver and front passenger during some front impacts, seat belts must always be worn to receive maximum benefits of this system. NEON's airbag system utilizes a sophisticated collision sensing system. If the system detects a frontal impact severe enough to require supplemental protection, the airbags automatically deploy. The system will not detect side, rollover, or rear impacts. In the event your airbags deploy, they must be replaced by your Chrysler Corporation dealer. NEON's airbag system is constantly monitored by an onboard diagnostic module. 
A warning light will appear in the right-hand side of the instrument cluster if the system senses a potential problem. It is normal to see this light when the vehicle is first started, but if it does not appear when first started or comes on and remains on or appears any time while driving, have an authorized dealer service the system immediately. In addition, your NEON may be equipped with an optional four-wheel anti-lock brake system, or ABS for short. Because ABS prevents the wheels from locking up, the system provides an added measure of steering control and stability when braking hard or when braking on slippery roads. When the anti-lock braking action is applied, you'll feel the brake pedal vibrate and you'll hear the system operating. This is normal and nothing to be alarmed about. To maximize the control that ABS can provide, Never pump the brake pedal on NEON models equipped with ABS. In fact, manual pumping of the brake pedal will diminish braking effectiveness. Just press firmly on the brake pedal and let the system do the rest. Drivers of non-ABS equipped NEONs should brake normally. As with the airbag warning light, the ABS warning light will appear for several seconds in the instrument cluster when the car is first started. If there's a potential problem, the light will reappear. Even though this self-diagnostic feature is very sensitive and is designed to alert you to the possibility of a problem, before you go to your dealer, double-check the system by parking and turning off the ignition. As you restart the car, the ABS will reset itself. If the light comes on and then goes away, you know there's no need to seek service. If the light persists, however, see your dealer right away. If for any reason your ABS system malfunctions, you still have full braking capabilities, just not the added benefit of ABS control. NEON is also available with an integrated child safety seat. For complete instructions on how to use this feature, refer to the owner's manual supplement regarding the integrated child safety seat. If you intend to transport an infant less than one year old in an add-on child seat, a rearward-facing infant restraint should only be used in a rear seat. A rear-facing infant restraint in the front seat could be struck by a deploying airbag, which may cause severe or fatal injury to the infant. Your owner's manual has operating recommendations and should be read thoroughly before placing an add-on child seat in any seating position. NEON is equipped with cinching seat belt tips that allow child seats to be retained securely in the rear seat. Simply thread the tip through the child seat, as specified by the child seat manufacturer, and cinch down by pulling the seat belt through the tip. As an added precaution for young rear seat passengers, NEON is also equipped with child protection rear door locks. These innovative locks prevent children from opening the rear doors from inside the vehicle when engaged. How you operate your vehicle has a direct bearing on your safety, especially when carrying cargo or towing a trailer. With the available lifestyle roof rack, you can load up to 100 pounds of gear on the top of your neon, but never place cargo on the actual rooftop. It must always be positioned on the carrier unit. Mopar offers a long list of accessories to customize your NEON, including a bike carrier, a ski rack, and even a keyless entry security system. While NEON has 1,000 pounds of trailer towing capacity, before towing, consult your owner's manual for restrictions and recommendations that apply to your specific model. Or, if you have any questions concerning any of the safety features discussed. Now, Let's move back inside and take a closer look at NEON's controls. On the inside, Chrysler designers and engineers have created an interior that's spacious and comfortable, designed to be unique and meet the needs of small car customers. But it's also functional with controls that are positioned within easy reach of the driver and passenger, like the heater and air conditioning controls. The first knob controls the fan speed for the air conditioning, vent, and heater. Turning the knob to the left will engage the air conditioning. Turning the knob to the right will engage the vent or heater functions. On models not equipped with air conditioning, only the off and four vent heater fan speed positions are available. Whether you have selected air conditioning, vent, or heater, the next knob directs the airflow in a wide variety of ways.
In fact, there are 17 positions for enhanced comfort and convenience. In the first position, all the air is directed through the four adjustable panel outlets. As you turn clockwise, air is progressively divided between the panel and the floor outlets, then through the floor and defroster outlets. While the final position routes the air only to the windshield defroster and side window demister outlets. The next rotary knob controls the temperature of the air. For warmer air, turn the knob toward the red area. For cooler air, turn the knob toward the blue area, or white, if not equipped with air conditioning. The next knob allows you to select outside air or recirculated air. In this position, outside air is drawn into the vehicle. This position should be used for optimum defroster efficiency. In this position, inside air is recirculated to provide maximum cooling when using air conditioning. It's easy to see that with such a wide variety of choices that comfort and convenience were top priorities in the design of NEON. The headlamp switch is located on the lower left-hand side of the instrument panel. To turn them on or off, simply pull or push the switch. This switch also controls the interior dome light with a twist action. The multifunction control lever behind the steering wheel has four functions, lane change, turn signals, flash to pass, and high beam headlights. To activate the lane change or turn signals, move the stalk up or down. To activate the flash to pass feature, pull the stalk towards you. To select the high beams with the headlights on, pull the stalk forward. To select the low beams, pull back on the stalk. On the wiper stalk, you can activate the wipers by moving the stalk to the low or high mode. If your NEON model is equipped with an intermittent wiper feature, you can select it by moving the stalk up to the delay mode. The wiper time interval can then be adjusted by twisting the very tip of the stalk. And finally, to activate the windshield washers, pull the stalk towards you. To engage or disengage the speed control feature, use the on-off switch. Pushing the lower portion of the switch, labeled Set Coast, allows you to set the speed control at its current speed. To disengage the speed control, tap the brake pedal once or push the cancel. The set speed will remain in the computer memory until the ignition is turned off. To resume cruising speed, push the top portion of the button marked Resume Excel once. Or, if you want to increase your cruising speed, Tap the top portion of the Resume Excel switch to increase the speed in two mile per hour increments. Or hold down the switch until the desired speed is reached. If you want to lower your cruising speed, depress the lower portion of the Set Coast button and release it at the desired speed. If your vehicle is equipped with either an electric rear window defroster or fog lights, the switch is push activated and features a small indicator that lights up when in use. Once activated, the electric rear window defroster is on a timer and automatically turns off after 8 to 10 minutes. The fog lamps are only available for use when the low beam headlamps are on and turn off automatically when the high beam headlamps are activated or when the headlamps are turned off. Complementing NEON's ergonomically designed interior are the switches for the optional power door lock and windows which are mounted on the driver and passenger doors for easy access. Other ergonomically designed convenience features include an optional center console that has plenty of room for a tissue pack, compact discs, cassette tapes, cups and mugs, plus a glove box that features a handy pencil holder, and optional map lights on the rear view mirror. In addition, NEON has a convenient shade extension panel on the sun visor, but remember to slide the panel in before you swing the visor to another position. The visor also has a handy clip for toll tickets. All NEON models have reminder tones designed to alert the driver to a variety of vital engine and vehicle functions like headlights on, engine coolant temperature too high, and low fuel. The instrument cluster itself is easy to read with a complete array of indicator lights and gauges. The indicator lights will illuminate briefly when you start your engine or when the ignition is in the on position. This is normal and gives you the opportunity to verify that a bulb is not burned out. NEON's engine computer monitors various sensors several times a second to confirm that the engine is operating at the optimum efficiency and at the lowest exhaust emissions. 
The check engine light will illuminate if the engine computer detects any problem that may lead to increased emissions. It is normal for the check engine light to come on briefly after turning the ignition on. If the check engine light comes on and stays on during driving, the vehicle may operate with reduced power or be difficult to start. If it flashes when driving, lasting damage to the emission system's catalytic converter could occur, so slow down if possible. Either way, you should have your Neon serviced as soon as possible. The engine controller also monitors the charging system and the battery. It will illuminate the charging system warning light in the event of a problem. If the battery symbol stays lit at normal driving speeds, have the charging system serviced immediately to prevent electrical damage. If the brake warning light comes on, it indicates either the parking brake is applied or there is a low level of brake fluid in the master cylinder reservoir. Ensure that the park brake is released and if the light remains on, have the brake system inspected as soon as possible. If you see this symbol, your engine oil pressure is low. To prevent major engine damage, have your oil level and pressure checked and serviced immediately. Other features you want to know more about are the controls on Neon sound systems. Let's take a look. There are three radios available on the Neon. The standard AM-FM stereo, the optional AM-FM stereo with a cassette player, and the optional AM-FM stereo with a compact disc player. Each stereo features five two-level memory preset buttons for a total of 10 AM and 10 FM presets. As an added convenience, each stereo also has a seek feature. To set the time on the clock function, there are two buttons on the right side of the radio marked H for hour and M for minute. You'll need a pen or similar object to operate the time function. For more information on cassette tape player maintenance or other questions regarding Neon stereo systems, see your owner's manual. For added versatility, Mopar offers an AM-FM stereo with a compact disc player and six-disc CD changer with remote through your dealer. Now, let's take a minute to review some maintenance areas that you should follow. To keep your vehicle in top running condition takes commitment to understanding how to maintain your new car. Begin by properly braking in your engine. While the engine in your new vehicle does not require a long break-in period, you should drive moderately during the first 300 miles. After the initial 60 miles, speeds of up to 50 or 55 miles per hour are desirable. The maintenance schedule provided for you in the Neon Owner's Manual contains two areas that, if ignored, can adversely affect performance and fuel economy. First is tire inflation and rotation. To maintain peak fuel economy and avoid abnormal tire wear, you should always keep your tires at the proper air pressure and rotate them at the specified intervals. Second, check the engine fluid levels on a regular basis. They're vital to maintaining peak engine performance and durability. Each underhood service point is identified by lettering. See your owner's manual for determining the correct fluid and fluid change intervals for your type of driving. The manual also identifies other recommended maintenance to help ensure that your Neon continues to provide like new performance. To add engine coolant, never open the radiator pressure cap. Always fill the system through the recovery bottle. To maintain the proper amount of coolant, keep the coolant level between the add line and full line. Check the level and add coolant only at the recovery bottle when the engine is cold. To flush and refill the engine coolant system, see your dealer for service. To protect your power-operated accessories from an electrical overload, every Neon features a fuse block. The fuse block is located on the instrument panel near the driver and features an easy access panel. Neon's main power fuses and relays are located in the engine compartment. Each fuse and relay is clearly marked. A diagram that details each function is provided in your owner's manual. On the front and rear of the vehicle, some Neon models feature bumper fascias that are produced with the color molded directly in. These fascias were designed with a grained surface. While normal washing will keep these areas clean, extra tension may be required. Use a common non-abrasive mild soap and a soft nylon bristle brush. 
After cleaning, rinse thoroughly with water and wipe dry. Now, let's see what to do in case of emergencies. Emergencies can happen anywhere at any time to anybody. The key to handling any emergency is to be prepared. During emergency situations, use the hazard light switch on top of the steering column. To operate, simply slide it to the left to activate the hazard warning lights. To deactivate, slide it back to the right. In the event of a flat tire, the spare and all the tools necessary are located under the spare tire cover in the trunk. NEON has specific lifting areas where the jack must be positioned. Jacking instructions appear on the spare tire cover. However, for complete tire changing instructions, refer to the NEON owner's manual. As you've seen, NEON is truly a remarkable vehicle. It represents a new culture at Chrysler Corporation, new ways to research, create, test, and build world-class cars. To get the most out of your new NEON, remember to review the owner's manual and tips book thoroughly.